Okay, we'll call this meeting to order at 7.30 p.m. for March 7th, 2023. Resolve that the agenda for uh, March 7th, 2023 regular council uh, meeting of council be adopted. Uh, mover, Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion or additions? All in favor? Carried. Uh, absent this evening is uh, Mayor Jacobson, uh, Councillor Powell, and Councillor Boychuk, who are absent with leave on other activities. Uh, and then we will go straight down to uh, item six on the agenda um, under communications to the minutes. Oops, I'm going too fast. There we go. Back there. Okay. Uh, resolved that the minutes of February 21, 2023 regular council meeting and the February 28, 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Committee be approved. I have a mover. Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Carried. No receptions or delegations. So, the communications now. Um, resolve that the building and demolition permits 423 through 623 with a total estimated value of $500,000 be received. I have a mover, Councillor Bobbick, seconder, Councillor Medwid. Uh, any discussion with that? Pretty straightforward. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Okay. Number seven, reports from committees. Director of Public Works report. Uh, resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. I have a mover. I'm um, just reading it right now. Uh, Councilor Bobbick, a seconder. Councilor White, uh, then discussion. Um, the uh, report from okay. everybody's had a chance to quickly peruse it. I'm doing yeah. that right now. I didn't see it earlier. Sewer service connection to me to sewer main. What's that pertaining to? Uh, so his sewer main uh, was no longer coupled, or his sewer service is no longer coupled to the sewer main. Uh, so it was camered and determined that that was the issue. So the fluids are going out when out. something solid came along. It was out. getting caught up. I I and uh, so there'll have to be a dig to repair that. Okay. Is that something that has to be done like probably right away or? Yeah, because uh, sometimes they're able to auger it and it'll last for a while, but this one is like every two weeks that it's backing up. Okay. Okay, any further discussion, questions? Okay, all in favor? Carried. 7.2, uh, be resolved that the protective services report for February 2023 be received. You have a mover. Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Any discussion? Councillor Medwood. Do we have a uh, fire chief with us? Uh, no, we don't. He's in Winnipeg at the uh, CEO. Got... Would you like to just make a note? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to know how the animal complaints were handled. I, it indicates that some were loose and some were captured by residents, so I'd like to know if uh, yeah. pound services were involved, please. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? That was it for me. Okay, all in favor? <coughs> Carried. Okay. 
7.4, Council and CEO reports. Uh, Councilor Bobby. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. Um, not really too much to report, just to uh, give a heads up to uh, in the near future here, we're going to have a, a committee meeting on public works just to uh, kind of meet around the budget and see what's going to happen here. But we'll try to get, we just can't, Jordan's away, so we can't, we can't speak to his time frame, but we'll uh, try to get, uh, I'm the chair of the committee, so uh, Councilor Edwards on there and Councilor Powell, so we'll try to get you informed as soon as we, as we find out to have a brief meeting, so a committee sure meeting, so we'll see. Just a, it, it's nothing, just preliminary to hear some of the things in public work, so we'll understand it when it comes to the table. No, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Other than that, not too much to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor White. Not that busy. Uh, February 24th, the Urban Forest Committee, uh, some of the uh, members called a little informal meeting. They're trying to plan their AGM for April 12th. That'll be in this office right here. And if there were a bottom line, uh, they're going to need uh, some new volunteers. Uh, some of our team is uh, ready to move on. So if anybody's interested in getting involved in the Urban Forest Committee, trying to uh, keep our community green, I would encourage them to get in touch with me. I can uh, direct them in the right way. Uh, 27th, uh, we had a, a little short doctor recruiting meeting. Uh, not doctor, that's not fair. All medical professionals. And uh, the February the 6th, uh, the uh, uh, February the 6th, March the 6th, I'm sorry, uh, myself, uh, Councillor Medwood, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, and uh, Crown Attorney uh, Levkoff and uh, Barclay met uh, trying to figure out uh, ways to reduce our crime. They had some wonderful suggestions, which we'll talk about at, at length later. Uh, if there were a bottom line, uh, people need to turn in uh, reports of their crimes and, if possible, testify because the lack of people testifying is creating a significant problem when it goes to court. Lots of things can go to court that doesn't mean the Crown will accept them or be able to prosecute them. So I'd encourage people to report anything they see and uh, testifying is a big deal. A very brief meeting today with uh, the Fire Chief and Deputy Mayor uh, Morio relative to how to improve our fire situation. I can advise the community that we're trying to get a date from the G4 members relative to medical professional recruiting and it looks like we'll have representation from all the G4 and one of our number one goals will be retaining because uh, that's become an issue. I think we've lost three in the last year or so so we have to look at some being proactive in retaining. So if our listening audience or viewing audience has ideas how we can retain these medical professionals, again feel free to reach out to myself. That's it, thank you. Oh. Councilor Medwood. Um, I've had a few meetings. Uh, I had the COPB board meeting on uh, February 25th. Uh, we had both representation from Winnipeg Police Service and RCMP in attendance for the first portions. Uh, we have decided to uh, uh, approve the use of some modern technology in communicating, so there is an app out there that was designed for use with uh, Citizen on Patrol programs. Uh, so our more tech savvy um, people, it might help with recruiting younger people who want to be able to do things on their phone. It's actually quite, quite nice. I've tried it a few times. Uh, we've also got approval for using the WhatsApp. We've already kind of been using it with our local group here, but the consensus is as law enforcement grows and starts changing the way they're able to gather and use evidence, uh, so is our contributing role to supporting them. Uh, the board is also working on developing policies and liability waivers regarding being able to review CCTV footage uh, as an option or an additive to support law enforcement, but it will not become a replacement for our main objective of being a visual deterrence and doing patrols. Law enforcement did also speak to that in regards to discouraging the idea that COPP members be directed to an area with sus suspicious activity, uh, noticed by anyone who is actively monitoring the cameras or systems, because that is just 
a safety risk and a concern because we do not have the appropriate training to, nor would we know kind of what to expect or what we might be getting ourselves into, especially if it's something noticed in a back alley that's dark, that kind of thing. So their, their recommendation with regards to us creating policies is basically saying no. If it's worthy of a phone call, then it goes to your law enforcement detachment and or 911 and the appropriate uh, response gets handled that way. The next uh, board meeting is April 29th, so we're hoping to have something in play there. I am looking to try and meet with um, both uh, Duncan and Hanson are well known with our CO. PP Manitoba program, so I'm looking to meet with them to get a little more um, feedback into developing our policies, and hopefully before the April 29th meeting, and our local meeting is going to be March 16th. The cow on the 28th had some good discussion regarding grants and donations, and I feel moving forward, putting some guidelines and standards in place will help council maintain consistency and fairness in our process and decisions making, so it's consistent across the board. Uh, March 3rd was Communities That Care, the Swan Valley Communities That Care. They were actually had a presentation on a new program they're looking to bring into the valley called Caring Dads. So there was a lot of other organizations that were there to represent, so the Friendship Center, CMHA, Crisis Center, Enhanced Community Mobilization Coordinator, CFS representation. We were missing a few entities that weren't able to attend, but the general consensus at the end was it's something that would be beneficial. So the next step is to see what it takes to kind of get it brought into the community. To It'll be in conjunction to, they also have, I think it says Supporting Families or Strengthening Families is the other one they're looking to bring into the community. And protective services meeting with the Crown Attorneys. Uh, my biggest takeaway is just the confirmation that they are non-political in their roles. And their role is to interpret and uphold the law as it is written. And they also, <coughs> what hit home for me was their, I guess, conceding to the fact that the forefront of the increase of our crime is, prob is due to poverty and drugs. So noting the fact of lack of affordable housing in our community is definitely uh, the housing shelters resources to me that's just a reinforcement that town and council really does need to support the community task force initiative who does have a task force that's working to bring solutions in that area to our community and uh, I've actually reached out to Mr. Armstrong to see if there will be a, a meeting coming up soon just to get an update on where they're at with their progress and efforts because I don't know if you guys got the notice or read the notice but it looks like Manitoba government is looking to invest a lot of money into homeless, uh, mental health, um, addiction, supports and housing and resources so I'm hoping that's something that they can tap in to maybe expedite some of that in our area. Uh, the Crown Attorneys also did reference that increased street lights can be a deterrent to some criminal activity and suggested that even lighting up back lanes can assist law enforcement when they're doing their patrols because when they're going down a street they can easily look down a lane and be able to see whether there's anything of interest that might send them down that direction. So in further discussion with CAO Poole, we had talked before about uh, maybe using the COPP to identify dark spots and maybe back lanes in particular that could benefit from some lighting and then maybe get in on the criminal property forfeiture fund grant next year and get some funding for some more lights in the town and the community. And that might help a bit with our, something that our town can do to help with our crime situation. And then I also requested to take forward to the chamber once CAO Poole acquires the information. They reference formal uh, community impact statements as well as victim impact statements. So once we have a formal and preferably um, automated one that we can just type into, 
Uh, I'll take that forward to the Chamber of Commerce and see if we can get a community impact one done on behalf of the businesses to put forward. And then also provide that um, victim impact one to all our chamber members so that every time they have an incident they can fill out their actual documentation that they like to see and see if that kind of helps us out on that crime front as well a bit. And other than that I have a few meetings upcoming this week and into next week. Okay. okay, thank you. And for myself, on the 22nd of February, um, Councillor Boychuk and myself, we attended the planning district uh, meeting uh, where the annual budget was uh, reviewed and approved, along with uh, Mr. Lewicki's contract with the planning district was renewed for another year. Um, February 28th, we had the uh, Handy Transit meeting uh, with the audit review. February 28th uh, was reported already on the community of the whole. Uh, and March 3rd, um, on behalf of the mayor, I presented greetings um, at the U11 provincial tournament here that was held in the community where we had uh, eight teams uh, participating, so seven out of community uh, teams were here with their families and uh, congratulations to the uh, Stampeder team um, here that actually won the tournament um, so kudos and congratulations to the young youth hockey players there uh, as reported earlier March 6th uh, the Protective Services Committee and CEO Poole met with uh, Senior Supervising Crown and the local uh, Crown Docket Attorney regarding our crime concerns and what was also mentioned and relate to those Crown Attorneys um, in a big way was that the community has lost confidence in the judicial bail uh, process that we uh, are currently experiencing here which from reading body language seemed to be a surprise to them but it's not to anybody that's been in the community. That's uh, not so much the the, uh, the trial system, but more of the bail and how quickly people can be on bail before their trial is what we tried to relate to them. Okay. Um, also watched the uh, provincial budget today, along with uh, previous announcements where um, it's with uh, I guess not great relief, but I guess it is a bit of relief that uh, there's um, announced last weekend and again reaffirmed in today's budget that the municipal funding is increasing as promised or hinted by uh, municipal affairs that uh, municipal funding is increasing this year, which should help us with our budget uh, pressures. Okay. Um, and liaison with uh, the mayor while he's away almost on a daily basis, trying to convince him that he's on holidays and that uh, administration and the rest of the team have the town in control and he should uh, stay on holidays and not worry so much. Um, and then just a, an update that I received um, regarding our CT scanner project is that the, uh, the scanner has, uh, along with other uh, capital uh, x-ray and scanner uh, purchases that the province is doing, uh, Shared Health has selected uh, a vendor or completed the RFP process, so they're in the process now of selecting the specific make model of a scanner and then moving on to the next steps of actually uh, where and how to get it into the building to make it operational um, in the forthcoming months, hopefully. So, um, so that's all I've had in the last uh, little uh, two weeks, so uh, CEO Poole. Oh, uh, Just uh, relative to your excellent presentation, I think the, the key point you mentioned at the end that I believe our community as a whole has lost faith in the bail system. Uh, there appears to be too many people getting back on the street. And what evolved from that, all of us got a handful of points from the Crown Attorneys who were very candid. Some of their points are at least debatable, so uh, there's not the time to talk about that. But uh, one thing that did evolve was the possibility of uh, our council, our members from council, meeting with a retired judge, for example, as one just recently retired in Dauphin, and or present judges, whether we could do it through Zoom. They must come here to do court. 
So we're going to initiate the process of maybe asking them when can, when's a good date to meet with them to see if there's some other perspectives that, uh, that we don't have. Uh, relative to your scanner, that's good news, it's on the way, it's been approved, blah, blah. I have real trouble understanding though I should take 9 to 12 months for something that we was approved uh, a year ago. So uh, myself and I'm sure many others will be asking to try to speed up that process. Thank you. Okay. Uh, CEO Poole, you have a brief report there? There is a brief report uh, for Council. Just to highlight, uh, I'm looking for dates for our strategic planning session. I originally switched to the 28th, but then we're on vacation on March 28th. So I am looking for other ones to so be aware for, for emails for that. Also to review again the, the budget meeting, which will include uh, a public presentation or a presentation that will go to the public <coughs> once it's finalized. Uh, held the CAO's meeting today. We, we still or we want to carry on that tradition, but uh, out of that we did draft an agreement for the Medical Services Committee. So the, the, the persons on the Medical Services Committee can expect the, the draft agreement and it'll, all go, it'll go to all the councils for, for review. And just assisting the business group uh, with their provincial petitions, we printed off several hundred of them and uh, we did offer to, to uh, provide some vests for their volunteers when they decide to, uh, to go around town. And just another expectation, uh, just to ex expect from me some sample resolutions for the AMM uh, June district meeting. So we'll, I'll email those out and the council can have a discussion at a further cal prior to June 1st. That's when they are due to the AMM. And that is it. Okay, Just a question, uh, CAO Poole. Uh, meeting with the CAOs uh, valley-wide, uh, and I know you're working on it, and I appreciate that, the relative to the terms of reference for the medical professional monies. Uh, has anything happened? Well, I know there's things happening. Is there a timeline in your mind? Uh, it was it was drafted today. We're getting the formatting done, and it'll go to the representatives on each council, uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, because once we have that and approved, yeah, then we'll bring the medical professional team in because there's no sense coming in if we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I, it'll have to be approved by each council. Yeah, fine. Yeah, and then that yeah. committee can yeah. let it. Fair pool. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, Councilor Medrick. AMMs, um, is it confirmed whether councillors are attending or not? We have, we did have a, an email go out. We have one councillor that may not be attending. That's all we've gotten back. Everyone else, to our knowledge, is booked and attending. Okay. And then travel? Uh, council will decide. I'm sure the van will be going. If, if, if councillors want to take their own vehicles, they're free to do so. Okay. My understanding is the third is for, is it CAOs and mayors? Correct. Yes, okay. the fourth and the fifth is for council. Everybody? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so probably the week before, or the meeting just before, that's where we'll firm up travel plans. Yeah, on the, even on the 21st, we'll, we'll get a schedule going of who's going down and when. <laughs> I, yeah, I just need to, yeah, so I can plan yeah. um, my stuff to know whether or not I'm going to end up needing to drive again or whether I can carpool with everybody else. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Okay, there's no realization for that. So number eight, new business. Uh, okay. Uh, Whereas the town of Swan River entered into a municipal gas tax agreement with the province of Manitoba pursuant to the administrative agreement on the transfer of the federal gas tax funds between Manitoba and Canada, and whereas the gas tax fund program has been renamed the Canada Community Building Fund, and whereas the administrative agreement between Canada and Manitoba has been amended and documented in a letter agreement as per attached Schedule A, therefore be it resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer sign the letter agreement uh, dated February 17, 2023, documenting Amendment Number 1 of the Municipal Gas Tax Agreement between the Province of Manitoba and the Town of Swan River. I have a mover. 
Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobick. Any discussion? Uh, Councilor White. I'm, I'm all in favor of it, but I'm noting the last uh, paragraph in, in the form. It says, we acknowledge the date of July the 1st, 2014. And is there a conflict there? Where are you looking at that? The very last uh, two sentences on the, uh, the letter. Okay, from so the, the original agreement was between the province and Manitoba was dated July 11, 2014. So mm -hmm. that's the letter that they're referencing or the agreement. Okay, so thank they're, you. They're well, not, you guys are happy yeah, with So they're not changing, they're just making administrative changes, changing uh, federal gas tax to Canada Community Building Fund, okay. just wording. So. Aside from the date at the top of the letter, all dates in there are no more are the most current one is 2021 so yeah. they're all a, a summary of the highlights well they're they're all listed there but the important ones is the addition of fire halls fire halls and fire station infrastructure and to expect the federal government to to tell municipalities that without an asset management plan their gas tax may and it's a strong may be in jeopardy. <clears throat> so that's the hammer to say, get it done. Yeah. Tell us from Edward. Um, speaking of that, uh, I know it's been mentioned previously that you are CAO pool working on it. Is that still in progress or we've got a current one? Or uh, Only public works is done, uh, but we, we are planning on getting a third party in. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Carried. 8.2. Uh, resolve that the Swan River's local emergency response control group, as required by the Emergency Measures Act 8.1b, shall consist of the Chief Administrative Officer Derek Poole, Fire Chief Darren Fedorchuk, Public Works Director Darren Harvey, Municipal Emergency Coordinator Matthew Linick, and the Protective Services Committee. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Any discussion? Councillor Medwood. Is this essentially what we will be getting a crash course on on the 22nd? Uh, no, no. The, this, this is, we're required to have this local group to, to meet at least once a year. So that's a requirement. The course on the 22nd will be Council's role in an emergency. That's what I'm meaning, like yeah. that it's going to be a crash course to explaining what kind yeah. of my role being on protective services, being on this committee. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> well, because when I read the document, I'm like, I'm hoping that the course is going to lay yeah. it out for me a little better. Cause, yeah, because yes. the, the local emergency response group is like, is the planning aspect as the course on the 22nd is the actual doers yeah, actually in emergency. They do tend together to blend, Right. Okay. but one, this part is the planning part. And then the other one is more of when things happen. So. Well, I was already but. kind of feeling that I was being <laughs> off in the weeds while I was reading it, so I was kind of hoping that the training is going to bring it together for me. So. It will. It should. Perfect. Yeah. Thank cool. you. Any further discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Carried. Okay, nothing under unfinished visits. Number 10, accounts to approve accounts. Okay. Resolve that the accounts as followed be hereby approved for payment. One general account checks number 29981 to number 30054, totaling $507,528.47 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 2, or pardon me, 5275 to number 5282, totaling one hundred and two thousand eight hundred and thirty one dollars and eleven cents as listed on schedule B and direct deposit payments totaling seven hundred and fifty five dollars as listed on schedule C and direct deposit payments totaling one thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars and eight cents as listed on schedule D. I have a mover, Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Any questions or discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have a few, starting with the ex explanations. Uh, 2993, 
Garden Securities, uh, 622, or sorry, 662.81 to install additional security equipment at Veterans Hall. What did we have added? Uh, Director of Recreation, you have an answer for that? Yeah, so that was a couple things. There was a pin pad replacement in uh, one of the um, the food processing center. That was a minor one. The other one was uh, an upgrade to our working loan policy. The arena guys now have a button they can push to call 911 with our system. That was a part of that. Uh, they're working alone in the arena predominantly from 4 to midnight in the winter time. So we gave them a button to be able to push if there's, if there's a panic or a hazard. That was the majority of that cost. As well, we had a um, we had a team knock off a sensor uh, with a hockey stick during a game. So that was the third one. Okay, so it wasn't just the veterans' hall, by the sounds of it. Okay. Um, the other one is three zero zero three one formal motors seventeen thousand nine hundred fifty four. And it references number 113 turbocharger, 117 injector, and 116 brakes, etc. Director Harvey? So those are uh, our dump trucks. And uh, there was several parts for several different uh, trucks yeah. that was included in that invoice. So 113, 117, that's 117 unit, numbers. unit numbers. Okay. So the different unit numbers of the dump trucks. So these are kind of like one of or regular maintenance? Uh, they were in the shop. The one was the turbocharger. Uh, that one was an expensive one. And, but yeah, it's just stuff when our mechanic goes through it and uh, the stuff's getting worn out, getting replaced. But it's like those items aren't regular items. Okay. They're just, this has failed and needs to be replaced. Any other checks there? Yes. 30039, uh, the Minister of Finance one. Now, that is just for uh, the as property assessments that we pay them to do. Okay. Right. And then under the Royal Bank visa ones, JDA Progress in Industries, what is a wrap belt for Veterans Hall equipment? Mr. Fedorchuk? Check with one enough. Okay. So we'll get back to you on that one. Sure. I have the... I'm, I'm just curious. I'd like to know what a wrap belt is. <laughs> I'm not even going to take a stab at that one. So. And uh, Flamin Sales. Have we reached out to Flamin's yet about that uh, security fence rental? And if there's something we can do to um, end these monthly payments? Uh, not specifically, no. Um, I know we've, we've discussed it, but we haven't actually said, will you sell this to us, but... Do we need a resolution? Do we need to call for a resolution for that to... No, I guess the... the I, that process is going to be coming to council, which, you know, will remove the fence. So, so once we decide whether we want to demolish that or not, uh, <clears throat> we'll know better, but I can... I will call Flamin and ask them if they will do a, in the case that we dem demolish it, uh, that we can do a rent to them. Because I'm thinking it's going to be a couple months at least before we even get to that being the process right. that we have to go through. So, yeah. Uh, the last one was the 30051 Swan Hills properties for the impounded vehicle storage. Yeah. In Really, it's it, it comes. The scrap guy would be interested. He just can't get out there, so we have no other option. But that that this whole thing is going to be done differently. That this is very rare. What happened? So it's not like we had a policy or or something in the past that we would knew that this would happen. Like really, we hold these things for thirty days. We'll use our compound next time and take them to the scrap yard. We won't do this. Ever again, but at, at that time when it was, we need to get these vehicles out and impounded. It was at all costs get them out of there so we can get this thing done. So they went there, but we won't use this procedure in the future. We'll use our own yard and just take it to a scrap period. <clears throat> can we not have? Do we not have some equipment that we can go in and 
we, we can, but we're doing other things and, and this whole process, it's, it's, just, it's just not efficient to just stop everything at Public Works and go pick up these vehicles. How many man hours is that going to take when they should be doing other things? I would sooner contact uh, a local company to go pick them up for us and take them to the scrap here. And how much would that cost? Because I'm thinking if it costs less, it might, like we're paying three hundred and fifty-two eighty a month, so yeah. what's it going to cost to get someone local to get out there, get them picked up and get them dealt with versus continuing to pay and wait for whoever it is we're waiting for to... Yeah, we, we just need to call and, and get the quotes. We were hoping the scrapyard guy would just go up there and get them, but that's not going to happen. So, Well, it is going to happen, just not tomorrow. So we don't know when it's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe we could look into finding a way of getting that off our monthly. Yeah. Councilor Bobbitt, you had a question? Uh, yeah, just to start with, I'm under the impression that we're talking about the fences around Conrad's apartment, sir, but the cost of those are being covered by the, the landlord, right? Correct. So at this time, it's not currently costing the town fund, right? No. Okay. Uh, just uh, to explain a little bit about that truck with the turbo charger is really expensive, but what's going to happen is you're going to see the tandem truck that the town owns taking a few trips out on the highway because the truck working around town with the deaf emissions in it, it overheats the turbo and that's why it fails. It needs to Warm up. burn itself <laughs> off and get a little bit of air through it because it's just around town. It doesn't get the sufficient air. So if you see the tandem heading to Kenville, it, there's a reason for it. It's not lost and it will be coming back. Director yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that same thing with our uh, sweeper. When the sweeper comes, it has a diesel particulate filter. And it's the same sort of idea, like these trucks are made to get out on the highway. Like, yes, they'll do haul and whatever, but when they're in town, they just never get up to 100 kilometers an hour. And uh, so there's a little bit of wear and tear, like with the turbo, and then also with the DPS. So yeah, that was our mechanics recommendation, just every now and then to take them on the highway, get them up to speed, so that uh, you don't have a build up of the sediment and carbon and that. Okay, Councillor White. Oh. Uh, just to carry on, just to see uh, Brant Tractor here for three thousand one hundred thirty-nine dollars. It says repairs, but I imagine that's it was greater blades and stuff like that because it's all under warranty. Okay. Uh, I have one other here. Go ahead, Councillor White. Yeah, like those are those are big ticket items, and uh, the motor is Councillor Better brought up is seventeen thousand dollars. I see five thousand dollars for tires, which I'm sure all legitimate bills. But do we do RFPs to our uh, our companies that provide motor jobs and tires? Do they all have opportunity to bid on those those items? For the tires, the guys kind of go back and forth. Like they do check the prices and they go back and forth uh, between the two different uh, sites. And then for certain things, uh, for formal motors, like it's just kind of the truck types and who can work well, on. Well, so they do check for the tires. What did you say about the engine? Uh, well, there was numerous things there, but it kind of depends on who has the expertise in town. But our guys do look around for prices. They don't just have one okay. spot where they go. I encourage that. Because I see, like, uh, the repair was done at one facility, but the parts were bought at another one. This was, is that one? Oh, I, one, yeah, to bring it in, yeah. Yeah, like the, this heavy duty, or drive in heavy duty. Uh, has a has an invoice there for the same unit regarding that, so it's probably it's a split job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Council Bobbitt, did you remember your? Yeah, just to speak on a bit of, uh, I see we're making a, a payment to Acre Industries, and I would imagine for the bumper truck. Okay, so I, I'm under the impression that would be thirty percent of the price. Is that how that total comes to play? Uh, it's a percentage of the chassis. Of the chassis yeah. alone, not of the extras? Not of it, only the chassis, I believe. Okay. I can, I'll confirm that, okay. but I'm pretty sure the, the yeah. down payment is a You know where I'm going with that, because the, 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 the other stuff is it's off a shelf. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, okay, all in favor? Carried. 10.2. 
resolved that the following unpaid utility accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will occur on said amount in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective April 1st, 2023. Utility account 20730070.01 for the amount of $13,035.11. Uh, utility account 20850030.14 for the amount of $1,522.28 and utility account 316650.09 for $60.93 for a grant total of $14,618.32. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay. Uh, Section 11, bylaws, so first reading of bylaw 323. So resolved that bylaw number 3, 2023 being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to repeal bylaws 1, 2022 and 12, 2022 be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Any discussion? Councilor Medwood. Is this just pertaining to the readings we did on the procedural and operational bylaw previously? Correct. When we pass those bylaws, the one of the very last things is that we repeal the previous bylaw. That number wasn't updated, so we repealed the even you know the, the, one the previous prior to previous. That? So this one <laughs> simply repeals twenty twenty two. Correcting that oversight. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Administrative corrections. Is that's, <laughs> that's all I wanted to clarify because I was like, I'm pretty sure this was part of a previous process, but okay, cool. that explains it. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Uh, okay, no notice motion. And then the camera resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed is personnel moved by Councilor Bobbitt, second by Councilor White. Any additions to it? All in favor? Carried. Okay, be resolved that third party reviewers, oh, pardon me, resolved that the third party reviewers' recommendation to dismiss the complaint 1 2023 be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Um, or discussion, pardon? Yes, I have discussion. Okay. I would just like it to be on the record that the dismissal is due to a, a missing of a timeline, not necessarily to the content of the complaint. So the mover and the seconder would have to agree to an amended resolution that states uh, dismiss the complaint 1 2023 uh, uh, due to non-compliance. Um, uh, I can't recall the item on the bylaw. Okay, so refreshed. Uh, resolved that the third party reviewer's recommendation to dismiss the complaint 1 2023 due to non compliance on, this, on section 8.2 of bylaw 16 20, 
20 be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. And we had a move by uh, Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Uh, any further discussion? Councillor Bedwitt. My discussion is I'm, uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm okay with the wording because uh, non compliance of section 8.2 in reference to the fact that a timeline was missed. Okay, I guess if, if the mover and the second are okay with the alterations, because is there any suggestions on that one? Like we can just state uh, non compliance on the bylaw timelines? If you refresh, okay, I'll reread it. Resolved that the third party reviewer's recommendation to dismiss the complaint 1 2023 due to non compliance on the bylaw timelines be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Okay. All in favor? All against? One? That's carried. Uh, resolve that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 8.38 p.m. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Councilor Medwin. All in favor? Carried. <laughs>